Good afternoon, Beagle fans. I'm Fanny Lacroix from Human Horse and Hound Kinesiology. Today, I'd like to give you an overview of the benefits of kinesiology for your beagle, keeping in mind that this modality will be beneficial for all breeds. First of all, what is kinesiology and how does it contribute to the wellness of your dog? Kinesiology is one of the most comprehensive and holistic forms of natural therapy. The reason for this is that it takes into account not only your dog's body, not only the physical aspect, but also his or her mind, emotions and environment. Its main aim is to restore the body's natural ability to heal itself. It relies on muscle testing to communicate with the body and identify energy imbalances at the physical, mental, emotional and spiritual levels. It helps with physical ailments, like the poor integration of muscle groups, pain, nutritional stress, post-surgery recovery, allergies, etc., as well as with behavioral issues, like the separation anxiety and excessive barking that are quite common in beagles. It is, however, important to note that kinesiology does not treat named diseases, nor does it diagnose or prescribe medication. It, however, doesn't mean that it cannot help. If we take the example of diabetes, for instance. Uh, kinesiology will not treat diabetes as such. However, uh, it can have a beneficial impact on underlying issues that have led to uh, the diabetes developing in the first place. Uh, for instance, if the diabetes has occurred as a result of a dysfunctional pancreas, then kinesi kinesiology can intervene at that level by concentrating on making the pancreas healthy again. If the, pan if the diabetes has been created by nutritional stress, then kinesiologists can intervene at that level um, by working out which foods um, are not beneficial in, in, your dog's, um, in your dog's feeds and thus sort out the problem by introducing the beneficial foods or uh, biogenic foods that will help stabilize the blood sugar levels. So how does a kinesiology session work? What happens during a kinesiology session? First of all, the kinesiologist will take a detailed history of the problem. Following that, a suitable goal is formulated. Or alternatively, we'll work out a suitable issue. The goal is formulated in the first person, in the present tense. So, as the owner of the beagle, you will be formulating the goal for them. The muscle testing is carried out on a human surrogate, that is to say a person who stands in for the animal. The reason for that is that it is difficult to muscle test on an animal because they're not able to provide you with the slight resistance or hold that is necessary for muscle testing. That's why we have to use uh, a surrogate and it is recommended that the surrogate be the dog's owner or still another person who has an emotional connection with with the dog uh, the closer the bond um, the more likely the session is to to yield uh, relevant information and to have uh, the the expected results on this slide well, the picture on this slide gives you an example of how a kinesiology session involving a dog can occur. On the left, you have the dog, clearly. On the right, the kinesiologist. And in the middle is the surrogate. All that is required of the surrogate in order to stand in for the dog energetically is to make contact with the animal. The kinesiologist on the other side will be testing the surrogate muscle in order to find out the relevant information as well as the various corrections that need to be performed on the dog depending on the issue at hand. So the corrections are done on the dog's body where possible. 
Um, the pictures on this slide show you a, a two different examples of correction. The first picture shows you a correction based on the um, neurolymphatics for the central meridian. And the picture on the, right, on the right is an example of work being done on acupressure points. Surrogating for your dog is um, a very is a beautiful way to enhance the dog owner relationship um, because it basically works according to the strong bond that exists between the two. Is kinesiology safe for your dog? Yes, yes. It, kinesiology is a gentle, safe, and non-invasive technique. No medication will be prescribed. Um, but supplements or other forms of support, like homeopathy, flower essences, may be suggested, um, especially if they have uh, come up in the context of the, of the kinesiology session, if the muscle testing has suggested that they are relevant. If pain is present um, and a physical correction is necessary, then the kinesiologist will be careful not to apply excessive pressure to the painful body part. Um, they will be aware of that thanks to the, um, the detailed history that was taken before the, the session started. And at the end of the session, the kinesiologist will also muscle test in order to check whether the session has caused the dog any stress. If that is the case, then the relevant correction will be carried out. Let's now have a look at a case study involving Ariel, a female beagle from Beagle in Mind. The goal used during the first, my first session with Ariel was, I can jump on the couch easily and comfortably. Um, Ariel had undergone an operation, um, a cruciate ligament operation on one of her hind legs and she had not been as mobile as she used to and was particularly struggling to jump on the couch, for instance. So th this was the, one of the main changes that her owner wanted to see in her. So that's why we decided on that goal. Um, here, the idea is that if Ariel was able to jump on the couch easily and comfortably again, it would indicate that um, her hind legs were stronger and that the cruciate ligament was less of a stress to her. The main emotion underlying this goal was intolerance, self to others. Um, at that stage, the, the owner, Ariel's owner, indicated that this intolerance might be from Ariel to other dogs. Um, her hind legs were quite sensitive and she had a tendency to snap at the other dogs in the household when they came too close. The stress towards the goal was 97% and the life energy 22%. The first correction that had to be carried out was a personal lifestyle change for Ariel, which involved mental stretching and stimulation. One cannot overemphasize how important mental stimulation is for dogs. Um, adequate pure water in the diet. Um, Interestingly, Ariel had plenty of fresh water available to her at all times. Um, however, her owner suggested that maybe getting a water filter would be a good idea. And Ariel also needed more personal space, um, some space where she was less likely to bump into other dogs um, and, and cause her some distress, especially at the level of her hind legs. Correction two involved the strengthening of a specific muscle called pectoralis superficialis, which is situated at the front of the body uh, using vertebral reflexes. So the correction indicates that the muscle was weak or under energy and the vertebral reflexes, meaning a stimulation of some of the uh, vertebrae, was used in order to strengthen this muscle. We then went into age recession in order to help release the stress that was still locked into the body due to past trauma or stress. The emotional content was quite strongly all about depression. Uh, we also encountered stress caused by eye movement uh, related to the emotion, the opposite emotions of oneness and separation. 
here Ariel's owner indicated that Ariel, before coming to live with her, had been given up three times and had been separated from her breeding mate, um, which is where the idea of separation might come from. And also another stress caused by eye movement in connection with assurance and fear of loss. Um, apparently, Ariel um, was very often looking to her owner or to other dogs that she got on particularly well with for reassurance and snapping a lot to assert herself. Citrine essence uh, came up as beneficial for restoring Ariel's powers and self-worth. At the end of the session, the stress had reduced to 6% and the life energy increased to 73%, which I was very happy with. So the outcome of session one, very positive, I must say. Ariel has been doing, had been doing very well since then. Uh, she's been very loving and playful with the other dogs and has been jumping on the catch quite nimbly, although she would sometimes still look to Michelle, her owner, to, to lift her. Uh, she got her water fountain and happily drinks from it. And she has a quiet space in the house and makes it very clear to Michelle when she needs some time out by sitting in front of the door. The second session. There we had to change the goal. Interestingly, the previous session had indicated that more work um, was needed on the goal. I jump on the couch easily and comfortably. Um, however, when the time for session two came, the previous goal did not uh, create any stress anymore in Ariel. So we decided to change the goal and to go for a trust that I am loved. The emotional component of the previous, of the previous balance has shown a lot of uh, stress around self-worth and um, the idea that Ariel had uh, been given up so many times and also had lost her breeding mate such an extent that she may not have felt completely comfortable and may not have believed that she was appreciated and loved. Um, and this goal showed, the, the muscle testing showed that this goal was relevant. Uh, the emotion was codependency, self to others, uh, which showed that Ariel was very dependent on the, the actions and reactions probably of other people or dogs um, in order to, to feel that she, that, that she was loved, that she was very dependent on others. The stress was 21%, which was not very high, and the life energy was 52%. The first correction showed that um, Ariel's muscles were under facilitated, meaning that they were pretty much all under energy uh, due to a reactive pattern, or at least was related to a reactive pattern between the muscles supraspinatus, which, are, uh, which is at the front of the body, and fascia lata, which is to be found in the hind legs. The idea of a reactive pattern is that the reactor muscle, supraspinatus in that case, switches off in a way fascia lata when it, uh, when it is activated. The underlying emotion was jealousy, others to self, which makes it sound as though um, Ariel might have been stressed by the jealous jealousy of another dog towards her, or possibly of another human. Correction two, uh, an emotion came up uh, which had to be discussed, intolerance, uh, which had come up in the first balance as well, again self to others. Uh, in that specific case, um, we were looking at other dogs. In correction three, was a frontal occipital hold, also known as FO hold, which consists in placing a hand at the back of the dog's ears and the other hand at the front of the dog's ears in order to allow the reptilian and limbic part of the brain um, to communicate effectively with uh, the, the neocortex or the frontal lobe of the brain, um, thus stimulating um, problem-solving capacities and the, the dealing of um, deep-seated emotion through the more through the reasoning part of the brain. 
In age recession, stress related to eye movements came up again, which was very interesting. We found uh, the opposing emotions of oneness and separation again. Um, this time, Michel Ariel's owner suggested that th this may have to do with possible early separation um, from, uh, from Ariel's puppies. Uh, this could not be confirmed, um, but uh, depending on the dog's past, it's not always possible to have all the information. Um, however, the good news is that through kinesiology, it is possible to release the stress. And the emotional content which came up was grief. So quite strong. Um, it's, it is possible, therefore, that Ariel may have been grieving for her puppies. The stress after the balance was 0% and the life energy was 99%. So great, a great results all in all. Um, however, um, there was an emotion to clear before being able to end the session. So some stress um, came up due to this um, due to this session, to probably due to the very emotional content that, that came up. And this emotion was once again grief. So the relevant correction was carried out and um, the muscle test then confirmed that the session could be ended. And the outcome of session two is that Ariel has become increasingly painful and relaxed, although she occasionally still snaps at the other dogs if they come too close to her hindquarters. Um, her eyes, which were quite protuberant when the session started, have softened and look a lot more relaxed. And her mobility has greatly increased and she's happily jumping on and off the couch and other pieces of furniture. Uh, Michelle, Ariel's owner, is especially pleased to see how much happier Ariel looks and acts. And in her own words, um, Ariel is acting more and more like a dog or even like a puppy. That's all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. If you would like some more information about how kinesiology can help your beagle or any other kind of breed, uh, please contact me on 082-929-5215 via email or sighthound at gmail.com. There is also a contact form available on my website and you can also inbox me uh, on my Facebook page, Human Horse and Hound Kinesiology. This presentation is brought to you by Beagle in Mind. Um, the, um, the email address and the website of Beagle in Mind are available on this slide. Um, Beagle in Mind would like to continue providing these webinars and other educational ventures as a free service. So please consider donating. All contributions will remain anonymous unless requested otherwise. Thank you very much once again for your attention. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next presentation. Bye-bye.